What's up, everyone? Week eight starts, sits, and hot takes. So the way this video is going to work is I'm going to break down every team playing this week, and I'm going to go through one player that is a start, a sit, and a hot take for every team that is playing. So if you're interested in more content like this, please check out my channel. I make a wide variety of fantasy football content as well as some other stuff too. So the overall intent of this video is to give a brief overview of my outlook of starts and sits going into week eight, but I have a more in-depth video every Saturday morning where I talk all the fan questions if you have individual comparison decisions and I go through those scenarios. So this is just simply an overall overview that I'm going to get through in about 15 minutes. However, if you want more in-depth comparison, comment below and I will answer your question and feature it in my video coming out Saturday morning. So stay tuned for that. Consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you're interested in more content. So the first game I'm going to start with is Green Bay and Arizona playing on Thursday. So Green Bay, highly publicized uh, absence of Devontae Adams. So my start for them is Robert Tanyan. I think that he is a, especially now that Alan Lazard is not playing, Tanyan is a great uh, play for this week because of the volume he's expected to get in the lack of the uh, wide receiver core. Um, I think Tanya is the guy to step up among pass catchers. The guy that I would sit, though, is Marquez Valdez-Scantling. He's coming off a hamstring injury, and he's questionable already for week uh, eight on that Thursday night game. So if he comes back in a very limited role um, or in, in, a, in a larger capacity, I'm still very concerned about his ability to produce given that injury. I would recommend you stay away from him given the wide variety of outcomes that could happen coming back from hamstring injuries. And my hot take is that A.J. Dillon will rebound as a flex viable starter. A lot of people are probably panic dropping A.J. Dillon after the negative two-point performance last week. But I, my hot take is that he will be heavily involved uh, given the lack of wide receiver uh, availability in this game. Arizona. So my start for them is Zach Ertz. I think he's got a great matchup once again in a team that has always a plethora of options offensively. Ertz could be the one to stand out here against Green Bay tight end defense, which is not anything special. Um, my sit is James Conner. I just have a feeling that Conner is not in line for a very successful game here. Green Bay relatively good at stopping the run, and I believe that Conner... It's not efficient. He's very touchdown dependent. If you don't have to play him, I would not. Um, and then my hot take is that DeAndre Hopkins will be a bust for this game. Hopkins is already dealing with an injury uh, designation, did not practice today, or excuse me, uh, on Tuesday. So my takeaway is that he, he you still have to play him, but just expect that he may have a poor game if he does go out there. Carolina and Atlanta. So my start for Carolina, DJ Moore, I still don't think you give up on him given the volume that he has on this team. He's got a great matchup against Atlanta. My sit, though, is Robbie Anderson because he is not doing anything uh, with his volume per target. Um, he's, he's really only getting catches at the line of scrimmage. I think he is a very avoidable player despite the Atlanta matchup. Um, and then my hot take is that Darnold will actually put up respectable numbers in this game. Atlanta's pass defense is not very good. Uh, Darnold is really struggling, but they are overall the 30th ranked defense against quarterbacks. So if there's a time for Darnold to turn it around, I do think it will be this game. That being said, I would not start Darnold. I'm just saying. Um, Atlanta, my start is going to be um, Calvin Ridley. You still don't give up on Calvin Ridley despite some poor performances so far. You still keep rolling them out there. Um, too much involvement in this offense, too great of a role. My sit, though, is Mike Davis. I'm not going to go into that because it's relatively self-explanatory, but this is a, uh, overall a, a great defense against the run, and Mike Davis is performing poorly as a running back. Uh, and then my hot take is that young Wei Ku will be a top-five kicker rest of season. I say this because, as I've already talked about in previous kicker videos, they've got the formula of a team that struggles to run the ball, um, can obviously has the passing weapons to get down the field into field goal range, but are not 
um, converting it in all the time. Ku has also not missed a field goal this season. So this is a great opportunity to take advantage of him. I think he will improve significantly as the season goes along. Um, Miami and Buffalo. So my start for Miami, Miles Gaskin, especially with Malcolm Brown's injury, I think Gaskin will have plenty of opportunity in a game where they, where they will be behind and throwing. My sit is Tua. Uh, this is the number one defense against quarterbacks. Tua is very turnover prone. And if you remember the game where we started uh, notoriously questioning Tua, it was that game against the Buffalo Bills in week 17 in 2020. So I would not play him this week. And then my hot take is that Waddle will be a top 15 uh, wide receiver in PPR formats for this week. Because I think Waddle will get a lot of volume. I don't know if it'll necessarily translate to a touchdown. But I do think that especially in PPR, he will be heavily involved. Buffalo. So my start is going to be Zach Moss. I think Zach Moss is somebody that you have a great opportunity to play this week. And he will give you a ton of points going up against a bad Miami defense. Honestly, for sits, I can't really think of anybody off the top of my head that I would want to sit in this game because it's a great matchup uh, against a poor defense. I would not play Cole Beasley, though. That's probably the line I would take. But Emmanuel Sanders would play him. Um, and then my hot take is that Stephon Diggs will be a top 10 wide receiver for this week. He has not been consistent this season, but this is a, a game against a poor Miami defense where I expect he will break that trend. Next, we have San Francisco and Chicago. So my start for San Francisco is the defense just because of how horrendous the Bears' offense is. Um, they are a play. And that kind of brings up an overall line point of that San Francisco. They have a few options, and that's about it in terms of players you can start. Sits, though, are Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, Tom Brady had a field day against uh, the Bears last week, but I don't suspect Jimmy Garoppolo will do that, so I would sit him. And then my... Hot take is that Hasty will get more involved as the running back and take touches away from Elijah Mitchell. And I say that because this always happens with Kyle Shanahan offenses with the running back core. So Elijah Mitchell feels safe right now, but Hasty could get more involved in this upcoming week. Next, we have the Chicago Bears. My start for them, and probably the only player I would consider starting for them, is Khalil Herbert. Um, getting a lot of volume. They've got a good matchup against San Francisco who uh, struggled against Naheem Hines last, or excuse me, not Naheem Hines, goodness, Jonathan Taylor rushed for over 100 yards last week. Um, so this is a, a good opportunity for Herbert in this game. Sit is everybody else, but no, most notably to sit um, is Allen Robinson once again. And honestly, he is a drop at this point for me. Um, and then my hot take is that when David Montgomery comes back, he will not be a guaranteed start. So my recommendation is, is that you try to sell David Montgomery. That's another story for another day, though. Pittsburgh and Cleveland. So my start for Pittsburgh is Chase Claypool. Coming off a poor game in week uh, six before the bye, you might be hesitant to start him, but I would still play him this week. He's too involved in this team. My sit, although I would definitely consider picking him up, is Pat Fryermuth because Pat Fryermuth, um, he's shown some level of improvement as the weeks have gone along, but I am not 100% sure if I feel confident throwing him out there to start yet. So I would recommend sitting Fryermuth. Um, and then my hot take is that the Steelers' defense will be a top five defense for this week. Cleveland is operating with Case Keenum. Steelers are also getting healthy off a of bye. They're getting some of their key defensive players back. I think this could be an opportunity for Pittsburgh to uh, explode in this game. They have not really had a great game so far this season, but uh, I think that they will rebound. Um, next. So our next team is Cleveland. So I would start Nick Chubb going up against uh he's coming off an injury and uh, you might question to play him but this is a good opportunity to against pittsburgh i would still play nick chubb um and then i would sit their wide receivers like odell beckham jarvis landry even though they're coming off injuries because they are inconsistent and then my hot take is that dearness johnson will still have a respectful role and put up decent fantasy numbers in this game i say this because this is a team that relies on running the ball and they cannot throw Nick Chubb out there every single play uh, 
with how often they run the football. So Dearness Johnson, I suspect, will take over some of that Kareem Hunt role, still have value for you. If you're really in a pinch and you need to throw him in as a flex, he would uh, be a decent option. Next game we have is Philadelphia and Detroit. My start for Philadelphia, Dallas Goddard. Um, great matchup there. Uh, my sit is Devonta Smith. I think that he is too inconsistent to rely upon. Even going up against Detroit, I would not feel comfortable putting him out there. And then my hot take is that Kenneth Gainwell will be a top 10 running back in PPR formats for this week. He will be heavily involved in the passing game, in my opinion. And he's got Detroit, so a great opportunity uh, for rushing touchdowns as well. For Detroit, so my start is TJ Hawkinson. Has been a, relatively up and down since week two. But the last two weeks, he has had 11 targets and 9 targets. And this is a game against Philadelphia where it is a definitely, it's definitely a beatable defense. Uh, look at what Foster Moreau did to them last week. I think Hawkinson will be a good play. My sit is Khalif Raymond. Um, has had some encouraging games at times this season, but I don't, would not feel comfortable putting him out there uh, considering the wide receivers all kind of going up and down week to week. And that being said, my hot take is that Amonra St. Brown will go back to having a respectable game again and be back on the fantasy radar because I think that was a one-game fluke. But that being said, I would not feel comfortable playing him or picking him up at this point if he's out there. But just understand this wide receiver core is going to be in flux. Tennessee and Indianapolis. Start is for Tennessee is Tannehill. Um... I think this is a good matchup against Indianapolis. It could be a relatively high-scoring game. I like Tannehill. Tannehill is also a good running quarterback, too, by the way, to give you some points there. My sit is Julio Jones. Um, I just don't think... I think you have to give him a few more weeks until you feel comfortable putting him out there um, in your lineup. He's best as a guy you should trade away at this point. Um, and then my hot take is that Darrington Evans is a must-stash. And I don't mean a must-stash. I'm talking about a must-bench uh, player. Sorry, that was a bad joke. But anyway, this is a guy that you want to make sure that you have on your roster if you own Derrick Henry because he is the running back that is going to be the early down back and take on a significant role if Henry were to get injured. Um, Indianapolis, my start is Michael Pittman. Um, great game last week. I think that will continue against a beatable, beatable Tennessee uh, defense. My sit, though, um, on the... Opposite receiver is T.Y. Hilton. So I, I bring this up because uh, I think T.Y. Hilton may be relatively disappointing. That is my hot take. I think that he he's coming off an injury for one. Two, this offense is going to try to run the ball. I think T.Y. Hilton, putting him out there is a risk given his uh, quad injury. So I would feel more comfortable sitting him in this situation. Um, Cincinnati and the Jets. So my uh, start for Cincinnati, Joe Mixon. I know you're already probably starting him anyway, but I think this is going to be an amazing game for him. Uh, don't talk yourself out of this one. My sit is Joe Burrow because I think against the Jets, quarterbacks do not need to throw it because they blow them out. So Joe Burrow may be disappointing. If you are in a situation where you have multiple quarterbacks and you're trying to pick who to play, uh, I would play the other quarterback. Like So for example, if you have... Uh, Burrow and Herbert, I would play Herbert this week. Um, and then my hot take for Cincinnati is that P. Ryan will have uh, a respectable fantasy game, much like I've talked about with guys like A.J. Dillon and Dearness Johnson already. I think same applies to Samaj P. Ryan. The Jets. So the only person you can start on the Jets is Michael Carter. Um, he did have a good game last week, and if they continue to pass the ball to him, especially in PPR formats, he will be a sneaky player to have on your team. Sits are the wide receivers, Corey Davis, uh, Denzel Mims, Elijah Moore, Jamison Crowder. I would not play any of them because we don't know how Joe Flacco uh, will preference them. I would just avoid the whole thing because it's a limited upside offense anyway. And then my hot take, though, is that Flacco will actually produce better overall fantasy values than Zach Wilson did. Um, Flacco is more of a veteran that can do what he needs to do to win. I'm not sure what receivers he will target. We'll have to use a week to gauge that. But that being said, he may actually be a surprisingly okay fantasy asset. Rams and Houston. So 
Start for the Rams is Daryl Henderson. I talked about him in my video yesterday. Uh, not going to go too much in depth there on that. But Robert Woods is my sit because I think Robert Woods has got a very difficult matchup uh, for him to do well just because, again, this is going to be a game where they blow them out and Woods may not be needed. And then that being said, Stafford is my hot take for having a disappointing game because much like Joe Burrow, this is a team that they're going to be blowing out and I don't think you need to play Stafford. Houston, I'm just going to be honest with you, there's not a single Texan that I would want to start in this game except for maybe Brandon Cooks in PPR formats. But Cooks may draw Jalen Ramsey, so that's not really a very confident play either. But my hot take is that David Johnson is actually a sneaky flex if you are really in a pinch because of his PPR pass catching value. He's had five receptions in two of the last three games. Decent player to consider. New England and the Chargers. So my start for New England, Jacoby Myers. He will get a lot of volume, in my opinion, especially in PPR formats. But my sit is Brandon Bolden. Um, great game last week, uh, but I just do not feel confident that he will repeat that reception total. He's had some games where he's put up a zero. I would not feel that you... I think he's a good player to pick up and trade, but I would not start him. And then my hot take for New England is that Hunter Henry will be a top uh, five tight end for this week. He's going to get a lot of volume, in my opinion, in the game that they will need to pass quite often. John U. Smith's injury, Mac Jones uh, building rapport with him. I think this is a great breakout week against Hunter Henry and also the revenge game against the Chargers, too, for that matter. Uh, Chargers. Um, I would start Keenan Allen. Uh, disappointing to a degree, but this is a great. Uh, you got to put, keep putting guys like like that out there because of his big play potential. You could sit uh, Jared Cook uh, because they're going up against the number two defense against tight ends. Um, I don't think he is somebody that you should play this week. And then Keenan Allen is my hot take. This is going to be a game where he, I think he could explode. Because it's, it's just waiting to happen with him. And if Mike Williams is still recovering from that foot injury, this could be a huge week for Keenan Allen. Um, Jacksonville and Seattle. So my start for Jacksonville is Marvin Jones off the bye. I think he's a great play at wide receiver. But my sit is LaVisca Chenault because Chenault's role in this passing offense, even in good matchups, is very questionable. I think Chenault is too risky to put out there. Has some value to roster, but I would not play him this week. And then my hot take is that James Robinson will be a top five running back for this week. Um, Seattle has got a bad um, defense against the running backs, and James Robinson is a very good running back with great PPR value. I like him for this week. couple games left, Washington and Denver. So Washington, my start is Terry McLaurin. You have to he's, that Basically, I say that because I think he's an every week start just because of the volume that he gets. My sit for them, though, is J.D. McKissick. Um, just too inconsistent. Even in PPR leagues, I would look for other running backs over him personally. And then my my hot take is that Antonio Gibson will finish outside the top 30 rest of season at the running back position. A lot of this is because of his injury, unfortunately, but I personally do not think Gibson has a very high ceiling. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video, he's a guy that I would recommend trying to sell. Um, Denver. So my start is Cortland Sutton. A lot of people may be down on Sutton because, oh, Judy's coming back. They're going up against Washington's defense. Still play Sutton in this game, in my opinion. My sit is Melvin Gordon. So I say this because um, this is a game where they're going to be passing the ball quite a bit and should uh, be able to gash Washington's defense. Washington is actually okay against the run, especially against running backs that are not as involved in the receiving game. And Javante Williams taking away some of that receiving role for Denver, Melvin Gordon could be disappointing. So my other potentially disappointing player is Jerry Judy coming off an injury. Um, I think he's a good play if, if he does happen to be out there, but at the same time, he's not somebody that I feel like you must play. So yeah, might take him a little bit to recover. And then Next game, we have three left. Tampa Bay, my start is Chris Godwin, especially if AB is out. This is a great security blanket for uh, Tom Brady, especially against a, a pass defense, or excuse me, a rush defense that is, is solid in New Orleans. Um, my sit is Gronk coming off an injury. I just do not want to put him back out there. I think he will be very disappointing and not needed. And then 
Also, I think Fournette will be disappointed because the Saints have a good run defense, as I mentioned. Uh, Saints. So the only player you can start on the Saints right now is Kamara. I really don't think that anything else really needs to be described there. But my hot take is that um, really uh, this is a potentially a, a tricky. Uh, 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 you might look at this and think that they've got a great wide receiver matchup and you could play Marquez Callaway or Traquan Smith or whatnot, but I would personally just not do any of that and just let that situation be because this is too risky to try to figure that out. Dallas and Minnesota. My start for Dallas is C.D. Lamb coming off of the buys. Lamb has been up and down this season, but I think you do have to play Lamb. Uh, once again, and my sit is Michael Gallup. Although I do like like Michael Gallup as a stash if you if he's out there, um, I would not play him this week coming off of his IR stint. But my overall take because of uh, Gallup's eventual involvement is that Dalton Schultz will lose his value and have a very disappointing week eight. I think this will happen as the season goes along. Uh, only so many balls can go around on this offense with so many great players, and I think Schultz's value will start to steadily decline. Minnesota. I think you start Adam Thielen in this game. He's got a great uh, matchup going up against uh, Dallas. Uh, Dallas is actually giving up a lot. Even though they're getting a lot of turnovers, they're giving up a lot of fantasy points to the wide receiver position. I think Thielen will be heavily involved. Minnesota doesn't really have a lot of players that I don't feel confident starting here. I like Cousins. I like the receivers. I like uh, Dalvin Cook. The, only, I, the one that, that I would take out is... Uh, K.J. Osborne, just because he's got a, a up and down games, depending on the script. Um, and then my overall take, uh, hot take as well, is that Tyler Conklin will be back and will be serviceable if you are in a pinch and need a tight end to start. I think he could have a good game. Last game, um, the Giants and Kansas City. So my start for New York, I know this is very uh, gross, but Daniel Jones going up against Kansas City. Daniel Jones has good rushing value. I think he will actually have a very good game against Kansas City, even if he does happen to have a few turnovers. My sit is Evan Ingram because I think regardless of what happens with this wide receiver's health, uh, situ or excuse me, this team's wide receiver health situation, Evan Ingram has proven time and time again that he's unreliable and you cannot throw him out there if all these receivers are hurt. And then my hot take is that I would not feel comfortable picking up these wide receivers on a uh, on waivers to rely on starting them. So because they're, all these guys are injured, and you don't know who's going to play because the reports are going to come out. And plus, this is the Monday night game. So if they turns out they're a game time decision and they don't play, you don't have any other options. So I would avoid yourself getting in that position and wouldn't get all crazy about trying to pick up receivers who may not play this week. Kansas City, my start is Daryl Williams. I think he will bounce back. Uh, my sit is Byron Pringle. Even though he had a decent game last week, I do not think that is sustainable. Um, would not play him. And then my hot take for Kansas City is that, not necessarily related to fantasy, but kind of. I think they will blow out the Giants. Monday Night Football, under the spotlight, they will regain their offensive sink, and this will be a very uh, fantasy-relevant game where they will blow out the Giants by a large margin and have a, a very high scoring performance. So that's all I've got for this video. I said 15 minutes, it really took like 25 minutes, so I apologize about that, but I hope this is helpful. So comment below if you have specific comparison questions of start sits, and I will answer this in the video coming out Saturday morning. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.